So now that I've released my game Delta Chase, all of the marketing material that I've used up to this point, the collages of my video games, yeah, they don't cut it anymore. So I figured this week I'd update all of that stuff, my marketing material, social media accounts, and my store icon links and things like that. But before we get into that, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. So the first thing I had to do this week was clean out my computer because, for the love of God, when you spend a year making games and just collecting images and videos and sounds and music, uh, it really clogs up your computer and it's <laughs> mine is starting to chug. So I had to go in and delete a bunch of old stuff and then do the usual defrag and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was doing this mostly because I'm now switching to OBS for recording and DaVinci for editing my videos. Up to this point I've been using a really sketchy screen recorder called Free Cams, which if my wife ever saw that she might have some questions. And Windows Movie Maker. I've literally been making these videos with like the most bottom tier free programs you possibly could get. <laughs> <laughs> like the most box standard stuff that like comes with a computer. I didn't look for anything really. I just grabbed the first things I found and started recording. With that out of the way, I decided to go look at how other game devs are portraying themselves. I went through other YouTube channels and Twitter accounts like Vimlar and the Unity YouTube channel and some others. And they've all got their banners set up so they can be scalable. So most of them have their titles right in the dead center because when you're on phone, it squishes down and cuts off the edges. Some of them are using some pretty attractive photos. Other ones are going very minimalistic with just blank colors with the logo on it. And typically they'll use the same or similar art over on other social media accounts like Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. I personally only deal with Twitter and YouTube and Discord. I just feel like using all of the other social medias would just be a giant time sink. And these three have been working for me, so, you know. After seeing what other people had created, I decided to just jump in and try to see what I can make. Noting that the name needs to go in the center of the screen, or like just off center, I started with that. I went through a bunch of different iterations and wasn't happy with anything. Like I just, it wasn't bad, it just didn't say anything about me, you know what I mean? Like if I put that up there, somebody would be like, oh cool! But after watching my videos, they wouldn't understand why my banner looks like that. And I think I spent like three hours on this one until I realized this has nothing to do with video games at all. Like not even a little bit. Maybe I could say it has like a medieval theme and a lot of video games are medieval, but like I, I haven't made any medieval video games. So like it doesn't say anything about me. It doesn't say anything about video games. It's just like I'm happy with it. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> It looks nice, and I did put it up on Twitter and YouTube for like three hours, but the problem was that I wasn't creating things that represented me. And I think that's the most important thing when it comes to marketing and branding and images and photos and all these things. The art that you make has to represent the things that you're doing. So to this point, most of my games have been, at least my bigger games, have been sort of dark. <laughs> That might be an understatement. But they've all had really good sound and an atmosphere, and I've been very happy with how they've come out in that way. So after talking to my Discord, somebody bounced back at me saying that, you know, my games aren't happy, fun games. I myself am a happy, fun person. But the games that I end up making don't tend to be. So I started on this little garden scene where there's vines coming down from the top and they're pixelated because, you know, I, I make pixel art. And when I was done, I was happy with the scene I'd created, but not the lettering. And thankfully, somebody from my Discord, uh, Lightspeed actually, uh, who made the music for my last game, he created this luminescent 80s style text for Helper Wesley. And between that and my own text, I created this. And I think I'm really happy with it because, not because it's, it's beautiful, it's not, you know, going back to the other game devs, they have these beautiful uh, landscapes or pieces of art they've had in their game, or they're just very minimalistic. They look like they were designed by a proper graphic design artist. But this one really speaks to me as a person because, like I said, I'm a really happy person who makes kind of dark games. And I think my name being lit up like that against the dark backdrop is a great way to represent that. So my advice to anybody else who's doing this is to take a little while to save yourself from the, I don't know how many hours it was, of 
making images that don't make any sense to who you are. Save yourself from that by doing some soul searching and kind of figuring out what it is that you do, or at least you want to do. But now that I have my own personal brand figured out, I need to go and update the branding and images and look of Delta Chase's store page. So in the rush to get Delta Chase out the door, I release the game without any promotional art or anything like that. So I'm going to talk about how I do that. Personally, I think for an itch page specifically, and I guess this would apply to Steam pages and all those sorts of things, is that they should really be representative of what the game is. So using themes and colors and images from the game to flesh out the store page is a great way to make the page itself a part of the game. But to start with, you need screenshots for your game, of course. And now you want to take a while to do this, to do it properly. You want to go in, play the game for a while, and maybe if even take three or four shots of this. The bigger your game is, the more time you want to spend getting just the right screenshot. You want them to be either action shots or beautiful shots or things that when you look at the image itself, you know what's happening and what it means for you as a person who's going to play the game. On top of screenshots, I think every game should have a GIF. There's a GDC talk about selling it with a GIF. You can look that up, it's actually really informative. And basically he talks about how your game should be something you can show the world in a GIF. Because, especially on Itch, when they hover over your game in the store, a GIF will pop up. And since a GIF is moving and everything else is static, it's going to immediately draw their eye to the GIF. Which means, suddenly they're looking at your game. And the intention of marketing is to get people to look at your stuff. So in order to play the game, they need to see it. So making a GIF that draws their eye straight to your work is really important. I personally take videos of my gameplay and then convert it into a GIF using easygif.com, which might not be the best way to go, but yeah, it works. <laughs> Next for your game, especially on Itch, you want to go in and change your game's metadata. So it's tags and it's information and what the game was made with and basically adding in as much information as possible so when people search for these things, they can find you. Like, Adding in that the engine is GDevelop means that if anybody is searching specifically for games made with the GDevelop engine, they can find it, right? Otherwise, searching for GDevelop wouldn't show my game. And then after doing that, I realized that I've just gotten better at creating more engaging pictures and images. For one thing, having your game's title in your image makes the name stand out more than it would if it's just tiny little text below the store icon. So I went through all of those again and redid all of those adding saturation as well as the titles to the games and so on, and I'll show you what that looks like later. While I was doing that, I was also updating, because I realized I hadn't done it, I was also updating the metadata and GIFs for my other games, like Atomic Trail, that I'd made well before I had decided that that's sort of the way the thing should work. So now that I've updated my store page with my new branding information, as well as all of the game's information and metadata and images, it was time to move on to the other stores that I post my games on. I post my free games in three places. Itch, Newgrounds, and Game Jolt. But I do Itch first because that way I can just copy and paste all my information over to these other two websites. I find that's the simplest way to do it and it's just less of a headache that way. I'll even go so far as to copy most of the tags and metadata over as well. Now that everything is nice and pretty, or at least as pretty as I can make it, I wanted to talk about one more thing that bugs the crap out of me. And I'm sorry if this is you, I'm not poking fun, I'm just helping, okay? Do everything you can to make it so that if somebody wants to find your other social media accounts, like your YouTube or your Discord or your games, connect your social media accounts together. Go into the settings, put in links, link them together. I can't count the number of times I've talked to somebody and was like, oh, this person makes games or this person makes YouTube videos or something, and I've clicked on their profile, and I haven't been able to find the link to their stuff. And so, if I'm busy, or if I'm just not all that interested, but I would have looked at their stuff otherwise, I'm just gonna stop looking. And they could have had me as a subscriber, or at least a few views off of me, but I couldn't find their link. So they didn't. <laughs> like, it's a really simple thing, and just please do it. It will help out so much. Anyhow, that's what I did this week. I spent the week doing all the background stuff that nobody really cares about, but hopefully helps people find my stuff. And if you're listening to this and you've learned a couple things, then hopefully it helps you too. If you enjoyed this video, maybe 
click on that subscribe button. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside. It's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk about, well, at this point, everything, but mostly game dev. And if you decide to click on that link, then I will see you there.